Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at proportions in triangles. And uh, we've already investigated certain proportions in special kinds of triangles, like in right triangles, and uh, you know, looking at the geometric mean and some of the proportions that exist there. But now we're going to look at some of the other proportions that exist uh, as we start to draw things within the triangles. All right. Uh, for example, uh, this first one, this is the side splitter theorem. Uh, if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally, all right? And so if I draw any parallel line, so a parallel line, uh, so it's parallel to one of the sides of the triangle, and if it goes anywhere through this triangle and hits those other two sides, it cuts those other two sides, it splits those other two sides, it's going to split them in a way that's proportional, all right? In other words, when you look at the, uh, the diagram here, uh, something like uh, BE over AE, those are the two pieces that that, per that, that parallel line splits that side into. Well, that's going to equal the other side split the same way in terms of a ratio. So BF over FC. And that's it. So that parallel line cuts both sides in the same ratio, all right, which means they're being cut proportionally, all right? So each of the sides that it interacts with that it cuts into, all right, is going to develop the same ratio as the other side, all right? That's the side splitter theorem. That's it, all right? And one of the easy ways that I like to remember this is, you know, if I think of this like X, Y, uh, Z, and I'll call it W, is I just think about this thing being extended. If you extend this line, well, there's one of your fractions and there's the other fraction, okay? And that's your proportion, all right? So it's just an easy way to remember that, uh, thinking about that parallel line being extended to create those fractions, all right? For example, if I look at something like this guy, uh, so once again, that, that parallel line is splitting both sides into the same ratio. So in other words, it's splitting those sides proportionally, all right? So what I can do is I can say, hey, that means that the 12 over x plus 1 must equal the 9 over x. And that's it. And again, if you kind of think of it this way, extend that parallel line, extend that parallel line, here's one fraction, here's the other fraction. Okay. And so now once again, uh, because I have a proportion here, I'm going to cross multiply to solve this thing. So I cross multiply, that's going to be a 9x plus 9 equals a 12x. I'm going to subtract that 9x from each side. That gives me a 3x equal to the 9. I divide each side by 3, and I get x equals the 3, and that's it. Okay. If I look at this one, once again, it says find the value of x. And again, that parallel line is going to cut those sides. It's going to split them proportionally, which means that the x over x plus 4 must equal the 12 over 18. Okay? And again, easy way to remember it, extend that guy, there's your two fractions. Okay? And so I cross multiply once again, that's going to be a 12x plus 48 equals an 18x. And then I can subtract the uh, 12x from each side, divide by the 6, and I get x equals an 8. Okay? The other thing that I could have done before I started this thing so right here, before I even start, you could reduce this fraction if I write it off to the side over here. Uh, each of those is divisible by 6, so that's a 2 over 3. And now you could cross-multiply. It makes the, the numbers a little bit smaller and a little bit easier to deal with. You get the same thing either way, all right? So it's not a, not a big deal either way, okay? Um, extending this just a little bit, so here's a corollary to the sp side splitter theorem. So we don't necessarily have to have that, that triangle completed, all right? In other words, if we have multiple parallel lines going through a triangle, it's still going to split the sides proportionally, so I would kind of have an extended ratio on each side, all right? But then imagine this, if I just have any lines, okay, sorry, let me uh, scroll back up so you can see the whole thing. If three uh, parallel lines intersect uh, two transversals, then the segments uh, intercepted uh, on the transversals are proportional, all right? So almost think of this like an extension. If I were to uh, give you a triangle to start and say, hey, here's the side splitter theorem. So these are parallel. So that means these sections are proportional. But if I were to draw another parallel line in here, if I were to draw another piece of this thing, 
Well, then, of course, based on the side splitter theorem, all three of these pieces would be proportional, okay? So all three of these pieces would be proportional to all three of these pieces, okay? And so that's the idea here is we're kind of just extending that, but then imagine if the, the triangle didn't come together. This is basically like an incomplete triangle, and that's why it's a corollary. It follows the same basic principle, the same basic rules. If this thing were to keep going, eventually you could draw it as a triangle and say, hey, now I have a triangle here. So now it's basically the side splitter theorem again. All right. So it's just spanning it out and kind of breaking it away from necessarily having a triangle. All right. And so once again, the, the idea here is if you kind of think of those as almost like extended uh, uh, ratios, you could have more parallel lines here and have a bunch of different ratios and a bunch of different proportions that you could write. Okay? And so this one, uh, the one that's given here is that AB over BC, let me try again, should equal XY over YZ. Okay? And again, it's the same basic principle, and I can remember it the same way. If you kind of just think of that as being expanded, it's this guy over this guy. It's this guy over this guy. Those are my two fractions. So again, it's just kind of expanding out from the side splitter theorem. All right? Same thing, but expanded out away from the triangle. Uh, for example, if I look at this guy, it says find the missing leg uh, lengths of site A and, and uh, C. And so if you look at something like this guy, once again, this is this version, I have this extended ratio here, all right? And so if I call this guy, let me call this one up here X, and I'll call this one down here Y, there's a bunch of different proportions I could set up. Like I could say, hey, this guy over this guy, X over 8 equals 9 over 7.4, all right? I could also do this. I could extend this guy and say, hey, that's 8 over 6.4 equals 7.4 over Y. All right, so I have a bunch of different ratios that I could come up with here. I could also kind of use uh, some of these uh, combined if I wanted to add these up. I could say x over the 8 and the 6.4 uh, together, so 8, uh, x over the 14.4 would equal 9 over the uh, 7.4 plus y. Now, that doesn't help me in this situation, but just understanding the different proportions that I can make here, Okay. And so uh, if I want uh, y uh, or x, well, well, let's start with x. So the uh, proportion I could set up for x would be x over 8 equals 9 over the 7.4, okay? And now I cross, multiply, and solve. Let's see, that's going to give me a 72 equals 7.4x. I'm going to divide each side by that 7.4 uh, and uh, just let my calculator do the, the work for me on that one. So x equals approximately, let's see, a, a 9 point, I'm just going to call it 7, and that was yards. And I've got to do the same thing to solve for y. The proportion I can set up is 8 over 6.4 equals 7.4 over y. And once again, I cross-multiply the 6.4 times the uh, 7.4 uh, gives me a 47.36. And now I divide each side uh, by the 8. So I end up with y equals, this one is exactly uh, 5.92. I don't have to necessarily round that one off. And that's it, okay? But again, it's the same thing as the side splitter theorem, but we're expanding it out away from a triangle, okay? And yeah, you could think of this just like a triangle. Eventually, if this thing keeps going, you could see that that's going to form a triangle, so it's basically the side splitter theorem. Uh, this one, uh, the triangle angle bisector theorem, if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, okay, so we're talking about bisecting one of the angles this time, then it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the other two sides, all right? This is the trickiest one out of all of them, all right? But again, think about what that's saying. The uh, angle bisector is going to split the opposite side into two pieces. Those pieces are proportional with regards to the, the other sides of this thing. In other words, when you look at something like this guy, this guy is being split into two pieces. I've got A, E, and E, C. Those aren't part of the same proportion. They're part of different proportions. This one is A, B over A, E. See, that piece of that, that side being uh, cut into two pieces, so that piece of the side, A, E, 
I set up as a ratio with the other side, the other side that it's adjacent to, okay? And then over here, it's the same thing. It would be BC over EC, okay? And uh, this one, you know, is not quite as easy to, to see in terms of just extending some lines and seeing the fraction. But again, it's always this guy. You know, when you look at this, think of that, uh, that bisector uh, as where your equal sign is going to be in terms of your proportion. Now it's just this piece up here, AB, over this piece, AE. Okay? And if I rotate this thing, just remember that the angle bisector, think of that as splitting up the two ratios. Okay? Same thing over here, it's BC over EC. Okay? The two ratios are split by that angle bisector. Okay? For example, if I look at something like this guy, uh, once again, if I think of that BE, that angle bisector, as being this thing that splits the proportions, one of the proportions is over here, it's the... Uh, 12 over 10. And then the other proportion is over here. It's the x over 18. And just make sure you do it in the same order. You know, right now I have, uh, for the 12 over 10, I have the, the uh, extra side over the piece. So this one has to be the extra side over the piece. Okay? And now, once again, I cross multiply. Uh, that gives me a... 216, and now I divide each side by uh, 10, and I get a 21.6, okay? If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. Uh, this one's kind of flipped around, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I could set up the proportion in different ways. So if I were to say, hey, you know what? Once again, think about the angle bisector as separating my two ratios. So one of my ratios involves the 16 and the 24. The other ratio involves the 9.6 and the x. And it doesn't matter which one I put on top. So here, if I do 16 over 24, that's fine. I did the piece over the side. Well, the other one, I just have to do the piece over the side. So it has to be the 9.6 over the x. Okay? If I had done the first one as 24 over 16, side over, uh, over the piece, well, then the other one would have to be x over the 9.6. Okay? So just make sure you put these things in the same order all right, as you set up your ratios. So now I cross multiply 9.6 times the uh, 24. That gives me a 230.4. And then the uh, 16 times the x is the 16. I, uh, 16x. I divide each side by the 16. I get x equals a 14.4. And that's it. Okay? So again, when you look at these uh, proportions... All right, the, the side splitter theorem and the, the corollary to that should be pretty simple. All right, we look for that parallel line, extend that parallel line, you can basically see the two fractions, okay? Set them equal to each other. And then with uh, the angle bisector, just remember the angle bisector kind of separates your two, per, your two ratios, okay? Set up one ratio and then set up the, the other ratio in the same order, okay?